Hi friends and adventurers, I'm Heather, welcome to my channel, Heather's Hikes and Adventures. Um, today we are going to be discussing some of the items that you do not need for this lifestyle, be it part-time, full-time, um, <clears throat> right away when you are trying to first get started. And you're doing your research if you're anything like me you're youtubing like crazy you're looking things up you're checking reviews you're getting more um you know feedback from word of mouth and you get super excited your wish list grows you start getting stuff for your rig and you're all excited to use it and then it sits and sits and sits and you don't understand why, because everybody else has raved about it, loves it, yada, yada, yada. Well, I'm here today to tell you about what I wish I would have saved my money on and what I either have not used at all yet or hardly enough to make it worthwhile, that's for sure. So stick around this video and you will find out about what I do not recommend that you need right away. Now these items, like I said, very highly rated, very highly recommended. <clears throat> you may end up loving them yourself. You may end up using them all the time. For me personally in the type of camping and solo travel that I do, they're not practical for me. So I definitely could have saved my money and invested it in other things that I would have used more. And that's the only point that I want to make with this video. Not to discourage anybody, <clears throat> not to down these products and say that they're terrible because, again, I did my research and thought I'd love them. But to tell you that if you are looking for a list of what you need to get started today, you can probably safely leave these particular items off until you get familiar with your rig and figure out if and when is the right time to incorporate any of them. For me, I'm still fine without any of them, so I'm a little, little, little tiny bit bitter about wasting my money on some of them, but hey, you live and you learn. I learn, so I'm trying to pass that along. Without further ado, let's get started on the list. Okay, first thing up I can tell you right now, some of these are expensive, -er, and some of these are pretty cheap, but I can tell you right now, one thing that I have not used once as it has meant, I'm so sorry, Tara. Oh gosh, see, look how stained that is. I need to clean that. Pretend you didn't notice that. Oh, here, we'll pretend like we only saw this side. Look how clean. <laughs> is this steering wheel tray that everybody raves about. I'm sure it's great. I just don't use it. Um, I don't really find myself eating in the driver's side that much. If I do, I feel like it's at an awkward angle. I'm so short that I have to be right up on top of the steering wheel so it doesn't really fit well. And if I have everything packed in, I am like, I have everything strapped in, so I can't really just move my chair back six inches to make this really usable. The only time I've used it was one time to sit it on top of something in my passenger seat to set something on. So definitely didn't need that. I mean, I keep it in here for just in case since it doesn't take up any room really, but don't use it could have saved the money. Not expensive, but still unnecessary. All right, I'm going to head to the back and talk about the rest of the stuff that I wish I would not have purchased. All right, hopefully I'm not too, mm, I think I'm too shaky. Hold on, I'm going to turn the car off. I was trying to be an AC. Okay, I'm back. So, 
um, some of the other things that I wish I would not have spent my money on purchasing is a good quality cooler. Now, I didn't go out and buy a Yeti because I am a single mom, wasn't quite in the budget even if I wanted to, but I did get an Arctic cooler and they're about half the price of the Yetis, but they're rated really well. I did my research. I learned how to prep the cooler, the best way to get the most out of it. And I learned that the truth of the matter is in Florida, there's only so much you can do, period, point blank. You're going to be getting ice every couple of days, period. That's all there is to it. <laughs> you're not getting five to seven days out of a cooler if you're actually using that cooler every day. Now, if you keep stuff frozen in it, maybe only go into it once a day, have another cooler, you know, there's things you can do. I learned very quickly I hated it, and I actually did a video on fridge versus cooler, so I will link that below for you to watch if you so choose. <clears throat> that being said, I honestly wish I would have just used one of my cheapo styrofoam coolers I already had. I think I would have found it just as useful and I would have been out zero dollars versus more than that. <laughs> so, I mean, it's nice to have a backup decent cooler, I guess. And I can definitely use it in bear country for dry food storage um, or just dry food storage or things that I need to keep more temperature controlled, like medication in general for longer trips. It's just not something I would have put as a high priority now, especially now that I know how much I love my fridge. So that's the next thing. Now. <clears throat> mainly everything else is going to be outdoor related and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Note to self, <clears throat> I probably should have waited until after filming to start drinking red Gatorade, so sorry about that. Um, but like I was saying, the rest of the things that I'm going to show you pretty much have to do with outside. I, not that I don't like being outside of my vehicle, I actually love it, but I, right now, time is so precious to me when I'm traveling. I am normally only in one spot for one to two days tops before I move on to the next, and I don't really get that often to enjoy camp when I am at camp. Um, it's normally, I'm leaving either right before or right after sunrise and or leaving <clears throat> i mean and or checking in right before dark just in time to eat dinner and relax a little bit so i don't ever really feel the need to set up that often because of that even though I love my clam, the only reason I got that was because of the amazing deal I got on it. Otherwise, that would still be on my wish list. Um, but along those lines is the hammock that <laughs> still has the instructions peeking out because I literally have never taken it out or used it. The tailgate tent that I researched <laughs> so carefully that I spent, I want to say, like 80 bucks on on sale. So it's not like it was super cheap that goes on the back. I decided it's not really practical for me because if I do want to tend on the back, I'd rather just use my clam detached and be able to drive away without having to hook up, detach, all that. If I use this and then want to leave super early, I have to be out there making noise when it's still dark out, which I feel like I don't want to do because I want to get out as quick as possible. And I also don't want to disturb my other campers who are sleeping at that time. So that's why I haven't used this either. I keep them in my garage space because I have the room and I feel like the day may come that I do use them. But for now, not necessary. 
haven't used them once, and I don't consider them a must-have to get started. In fact, I don't consider any outdoor space a must-have other than maybe a camp chair. So the last two items I'm going to discuss in this video are my cot that I chose in my initial setup, which I will insert a clip of right after talking about it here. Um, I do wish <clears throat> the one that I got, which was totally unintentional, was for a, a big and tall <laughs> person. Um, it's a 30 by 80, which is way over the standard size of a cot which has pros and cons. If you're tall and need the extra space to stretch out, it's awesome. Since it is bigger, you have more under cot storage space as well, so you can fit a lot more under there. For me, I really wish I would have gone with a standard cot had I known. I could have gotten the exact same cot that I got by Coleman in the standard size instead of the larger one for a lot cheaper. Even though I got mine on sale and it was still a good deal, I could have gotten the standard size one for probably 50 to 60 on sale and gotten cot sheets, um, gotten a smaller foam topper, called it a day, and I would have had more interior space inside my van, which I would have much rather had. Um, I don't, I didn't like trading the interior space. The only good thing I can say about it is when I was using my third row seat and the cot, it did wedge in very nicely, which kept it very tight in place. But again, I would have much rather had the extra six inches of length and the extra, like, I think six to seven inches of width. Um, I could have done a lot more with that extra interior space for sure, and it would have felt a lot roomier. Of course, it looks like a moot point right now since I'm not using the cot, but I do plan on using it for my cold weather camping still, just because I can use my zero degree sleeping bag and fit all of my cold weather extra items under there without any additional clutter. So that is something I wish I'd thought of. I would have saved money and it would have been more practical. Which brings me to my very last item that I wish I would have researched more and gotten a different alternative for, and that was my rain guards outside. Let me show you what I mean. Oh, first I'm gonna go ahead and insert that clip of my initial setup so you can see what I mean about the cot. It's not as big a deal on my front two um, ring guards, and they are more affordable, the stick-on kind, <laughs> and I did kind of finagle it by sticking it under there, but you can really tell on the back ones because of the stick-on. They just kind of warped over time between the wind and the storms, and they just don't look as nice. I really wish I would have gotten the in-channel rain guards by WeatherTech. I've been really happy with WeatherTech as a brand. So in my next ride, I am definitely going to go with the in-channel ones from them instead. Um, they get the job done, but I'm not a huge fan. Also, I just have to shout out my new sticker. If you know, you know why I love this so much. One of my all-time favorite movies. And when I saw this, I just knew I had to have it. So it's the first sticker I've put on my fridge, aside from my Route 66 one. I love it. And there you have it, folks. 
those are the items that you do not need when you're getting started with van life or car camping. Hopefully I was able to save you some money with your initial must-haves. Again, I don't want to down any of these products. In fact, I'll link them below. Like I said, I did my research and I really thought that I was going to be thrilled with them. I just want to be transparent with you all and let you know so far I have not used these items and I definitely could have saved the money and opted for other things. This is one of the reasons now why I recommend so strongly that you will, if you have the option, of course that's a big if, not everybody has the option to test the waters, try things out, wait and see what works for them, and I totally get that. If that is not your situation, please do what works best for you. If you do have the option, and this is a part-time, by choice type of lifestyle for you, um, or even if it is full-time, but you have time to get set up and figure out what works best for you before going full-time, I so strongly recommend that. You will quickly find out what you don't think you'll need or rarely if ever need, and the things that you're going to need all the time, accessible every day. So definitely try to kind of sit with your ride and figure out what is best for you. And again, I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope you liked it. If so, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, please. And um, I'll see you next time. See you very soon. All right. Bye, guys. Thanks again.